Hi everyone, my name's Rob, this is Adeptus Psychonautica, and in this series of videos, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the planning, organizing, and the execution of going on a plant medicine retreat in South America. Now in this series, there's a number of topics that I'm gonna be discussing. Everything from how to choose which center to visit, the actual logistics of traveling, the, you know, the infamous ayahuasca diet, what to pack, what to expect from your time there, and what to do once the retreat is over, and perhaps a few other topics as well. So each one of these I'm gonna put into a separate video and then I'll combine the whole lot together and put it into a playlist, which I'll add a link to in the description or up there somewhere. The reason I'm doing this now is I'm about two weeks away from my next trip out to South America. And I've done this about four times now, so I've got a handle on what kind of works. And it's my hope that in sharing this with you, it'll help you plan for your own trip. So the first question that people always ask is which is the best center to go to? And the truth is, it depends. It depends on what you want. And so there's a lot of different factors that we're gonna to have to take into account here. Are you looking for something with a high comfort level? Do you want something that's in a particular location? Have you got a certain budget limitation that you're working to? Is there something kind of special that you want about this retreat? Say, you know, some people are uncomfortable working with female shamans. So there's all these different factors that we've got to take into account. And each one of these is gonna have certain limitations around it. So really, any planning any kind of retreat like this, it's a compromise. And perhaps if, you know, if you're one of these people who are lucky enough to have infinite resources and infinite money, it's not a problem for you. But for most of us, we're gonna to have to find somewhere on that line that balances things out. And what I thought might be useful is if I talk you through my process, what I look for when I plan my first ayahuasca retreat. Now, this is not to say that you should follow exactly what I did. You know, you're gonna have different tastes and requirements to what I did. But I'll talk through the mental process and then you can map that onto yourself and think, oh yeah, well, I, I want it to be more like this or I want it to be more like that and make your own choices. So when I planned my very first trip out to South America, I had a certain set of expectations and requirements in mind. For me, it was my 40th birthday. And at the time, as far as I knew, this was gonna be my one and only trip out to Peru. So I wanted to make sure that I packed quite a lot in there. I really wanted to see as much as possible within the sort of two weeks that I was there. And I knew that I wanted to see some of the jungle and also see some of the sacred valley, like kind of like Machu Picchu stuff. So I was, I already was building up a picture in my mind. Um, obviously I wanted to do things like ayahuasca ceremonies. I knew I wanted to do a San Pedro ceremony. I knew I wanted to see Machu Picchu. I wanted to see as much of, of the jungle as possible. So I knew I wanted to do something which involved a lot of activities and excursions. Uh, so I wasn't just gonna be sat, say, in a, in a center somewhere every day. I wanted to be sort of going out and seeing lots of different things. So I really was packing as much into this trip as possible. Now the simple and most obvious requirement was that I was looking to do ayahuasca. And so I knew I wanted to do as many ayahuasca ceremonies as possible within the time there. And I think that a more, the kind of the most reasonable amount you can do is four ayahuasca ceremonies within a seven day period. So that I found a center, first of all, that could fulfill that requirement. Um, I also wanted to sort of try a few different kind of plant medicines, things like Nunu or, or Cambo, which is a toad medicine. So that sort of packed out that first week for me is that I knew I wanted to be in the jungle. I knew I, I was gonna to go to the jungle first, do ayahuasca in its traditional setting, um, do a lot of jungle excursions, things like uh, going visiting uh, this place called Monkey Island where monkeys will come right up to you and you can interact with them and they'll sort of come and sit on your knee and you can feed them out of your hand. Um, going to other sort of like wildlife preserves. I also knew at that point that I wanted to work with a Shipibo shaman. The reason I knew this is I'd been going on YouTube and I'd been listening for like certain traditional songs and like flicking through different playlists of traditional ikaros. These are the songs that the shaman sing. And I heard some songs by the Shipibo shaman and they really just resonated with me. And there's different style, different shamanic styles and traditions, but I'd kind of got into head, okay, I want to work with a Shipibo shaman. So that kind of gave me my full set of requirements around the jungle part. And then I knew that ideally I was then gonna, you know, after the jungle part had finished, 
move over to the Sacred Valley, which is in the mountains, and do another week there, and there do things like uh, San Pedro, which is, you know, the, the cactus medicine, uh, and visit places like Machu Picchu. Now, ideally, uh, I w you know, I wanted to find somewhere where that could handle all of this for me. And look, I was lucky enough to, to find somewhere, and I, I don't want to, you know, turn this into a promotion, but um, the, the centre that I found, which was uh, Arcana, could fulfil all these requirements for me. And so that's why I chose to go with them. And again, that was just my specific requirements. Now, let's kind of map that onto a completely different scenario. If you're wanting, say, you know, a very introspective time, not as much socialising, um, somewhere with a lot of peace and quiet, a lot of sort of quiet meditation time, then maybe, Ar you know, the place that I went to, Arcana, would not be as good as fit for you. I hear that uh, places like Temple of the Way of Light are much more... Uh, aligned with that kind of um, introspective route. So really the question is always to you, what do you want from this ceremony? What are your expectations? You know, if you're looking for, um, you know, a, a sort of a younger, more activity crowd, then, yeah, you know, make sure that you find somewhere like that. You don't want to then go into somewhere where they expect you to be very kind of solemn and, and quiet. And really the, the best ways to find this out, certainly you can do things like uh, look on YouTube or Reddit for reviews. Um, but also, you know, if you find somewhere that looks, you know, almost right, but you're not sure, then get in touch with that centre. You know, any reputable centre will be happy to answer questions that you've got. So, you know, phone them up or, or drop them an email and just say, hey, you know, can we arrange a call or ca can I ask you some questions? And I'm sure they'll be more than happy to accommodate you. So the key thing here is to find a centre that aligns with what you want. You know, don't just go off that you've heard that this center is the best or it's the most authentic. That kind of means nothing or perhaps it meant something to the person who said it, but it doesn't necessarily apply to you. You know, my idea of the best might not be your idea of the best. So always pick the thing which resonates most with you. So that's my basic advice for choosing a center. You know, have a good look around, follow your heart and pick the one that you think is right for you. And for anyone who's already been, you know, I mean, what do you think? If you agree or disagree with any of these comments or you've got recommendations of your own, just stick them in the comments below and uh, tune in next time as I continue this series and we'll talk about the kind of the what's and the how's of actually making the trip to South America. And as always, a big shout out to my patrons. You guys are awesome. And I will see you all next time on Adeptus Psychonautica.